This lesson is Unit 13, Lesson 2, Data from a Sample. We'll be covering pages 447 to 450. It'd be helpful if you had a highlighter and you want to have a calculator. And the homework is pages 451 and 452. Uh, some of what we do today, uh, hopefully you'll recall because you did do this in um, Algebra 1. So in the last lesson, you learned that data is often collected from a sample of the population of interest. Assume that the sample was chosen randomly. The data from the sample is supposed to be to represent the population from which it was chosen. The first step in the process of using data is organizing the data and calculating the center, the mean, median, and or mode, and the spread the range, interquartile range, standard deviation. In Algebra 2, we are most interested in finding the mean and the standard deviation of the data set. To report the highway gas mileage for the 2019 Dodge Charger, the company randomly selected a sample of cars and tested them. The mileages, miles per gallon, rounded to nearest whole number, were the following. So we have these 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, oops, plus 1, 25. So we have 25 pieces of data here. When there is a long list of data with many repeats, it's helpful to organize the data in a frequency table. Complete the frequency column of the table. Okay, so here's our mileage. And so we just use tick marks for the number of times it occurs. So here I start with the 23. So I'll put a tick mark there for 23. 27, 27 again. 28, 25, 26, 25, 29, 26, 27, 24, 26, 26 again, 24, 27, 25, 28, 25, 26, 25, 29, 26, 27, 24, and 26. So the frequency, so mileage 23 happened once, 24 three times, um, 25, 5, 7, 5, 2, and 2. And hopefully that should total 25. That's 10, 16, and 9 is 25. I think I called these tick marks, also tally marks. Um, okay, so now use your calculator and one variable statistics command to find the mean and standard deviation of the mileage data to the nearest hundredth. Uh, so the steps are here. Um, you did do this in Algebra 1. So first we press STAT. I'll put it in the middle. That might work. Okay, so I'm pressing the STAT key right here. STAT. Um, I'm on edit, so just press ENTER. So the mileage is L1, and the frequency goes in L2. So 23, and then arrow over, takes us to the top of L2. Now the frequency, so we entered the two lists in L1 and L2. Now stat, let me just double check. All right, everything looks good. 
stat, right arrow over to calc, and then number one, which is one variable statist statistic, so enter. List is L1, that's what we want. The frequency list is L2. So I'm just going to use the down arrow, and now L2 is second two. Okay. You see it here, here's L2 in blue, so second number two and press enter. And now calculate, press enter. The mean is the X bar here, right at the top. So the mean is X bar, which is 26.04. And the standard deviation this is a sample that we have here, so it is the capital S lowercase x. So this here is our sample standard deviation. So I'm going to do standard deviation. It's capital S lowercase x is 1.54, rounding that to the nearest hundredth, 1.54. Now we want to complete a dot plot and a histogram for the data below. These are called distributions. All right, so for my dot plot, we have the values, the mileage are already here. So 23, that occurred once, taking that from the table. So we put one dot. Mileage 24, three times, so that's three dots. 25, five dots. 26, seven dots. Twenty-seven five. And two and two. For histogram, let's see. Um, the highest we have is seven. So I'll go every other one, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this would be our frequency. And this would be our mileage. And I'll use two spaces. So 23, 24, 23 frequency is 1 so it gets a height of 1 24 3 5 6 was 7 Five and two and two. All right, so there's our histogram and our dot plot. Describe the shape of the mileage distribution on the histogram. Draw a smooth curve that comes reasonably close to passing through the midpoints of the tops of the bars, describe the shape of the curve. Okay, so, um, well, let's see if I can get both of these on the camera or at least close to it. Well, it's sort of what we call mound shape. And, but draw a smooth curve that comes reasonably close to passing through the midpoints of the tops of the bars. All right, so the midpoints of the tops of the bars, I'm just going to draw those in. So 
So I want to make this, try to make them like a nice smooth curve. And it's not so nice on that side. All right, but is this mound shaped? Mark the mean on the histogram. So our mean was 26.04. So if this is 26, it's, it's very close to that. 26.04 is our mean, x bar. Mark one standard deviation to left and to the right of the mean. Well, one standard deviation is like almost one and a half. So 26 to 27 would be one and a half more would be about here. 26.04, let me put this on paper too, if I can move this up. So I want the mean plus one standard deviation. Seven point five eight, and then one standard deviation to the right. Shade the area under the curve that represents the proportion of data within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, so we want to shade from here to here. So from here to here is what we want to shade. Under the curve. Estimate the percentage of the curve that you shaded in. Well, it seems definitely more than 50%. Um, is it 80%? I think that might be a little too high. So our answers can vary here. I'm going to say 70%. Again, our answers can vary. Distributions can have different shapes as follows. Symmetric, a distribution is approximately symmetric if the upper and lower half of the distribution are about the same. A distribution is described as mound shaped if it is approximately symmetric and has a single peak. So this is the most common, is a mound shaped. It's approximately symmetric and has a single peak, which this is. Nice mound shape. A normal curve is a specific mound shaped curve, and any data distribution that makes a mound shape is approximately normal. So if you have a mound-shaped data distri distribution, then you are looking at an approximately normal curve. The distribution is approximately symmetric, this distribution here, but it is not mound-shaped. Each of the bars is about the same height. It is not a normal distribution. 
Remember, if it's got a mound shape to it, then it would be a normal distribution. Skewed. A distribution is described as skewed if most of the data is clustered on one side, creating a tail in the other direction, and it's described by the direction of its tail. So here we have, in this di distribution, most of the data is on this side, and it, it is skewed in the direction of the tail, which is to the right. So this is skewed right. It is not a normal distribution. And we see in this last distribution here that this is skewed left. It also is not a normal distribution. Exercise number two, we have a new machine was installed in a construction plant in the first year on 30 ra randomly selected days. The number of times the machine made an error was watched and recorded. Construct a dot plot of the data in the table. Okay, so here we have the number of errors and the number of times it occurred. So 11 errors occurred uh, only one day. We want a dot plot. 12 errors occurred two days. Thirteen five, fourteen seven, fifteen six, sixteen six, seventeen three, and eighteen once. Look at the dot plot. Do you think a normal distribution would be an appropriate model for, for this distribution? Um, yes. You know, it's mound shaped with a single peak. Find the mean and standard deviation of the number of machine errors per day to the nearest 10. Okay, so this is where we're going to the calculator. Stat, edit, and if I go up to the heading of L2, plus, press clear, the clear button, and enter. Then I'll wipe it out. And then arrow over and up, so I'm at the heading of L1. Press clear and enter. So it erases. Um, put the data in, 11, 12, 13, and then the frequency, um, just to save time, because I know some of these videos are getting very long. Um, so you can put that into the calculator if you have a calculator. So if you don't have a calculator like this at home, then um, you know I don't expect you to have to find the mean and standard deviation on your own. All right. Um, so, the mean is 14.6, and the sample standard deviation is 1.7. Actually, I'm going to pause the video and put this in, and then start again. All right. So I have the data in, L1 and L2, stat, arrow over to calc, one variable stats, frequency list is still in there in L2 from the prior exercise, and the mean, 14.6, rounding to the nearest tenth, and the sample standard deviation, one point. 
7, rounding to the nearest tenth. Mark the mean and the values 1 and 2 standard deviations above and below the mean on the data on the dot plot. Okay, so the mean is 14.6. So just a little slightly more than halfway. Here's the mean of 14.6. And then 1.7 above and below. So let's do 14.6 plus 1.7. What is that? 16.3. And 14.6 minus 1.7, 12.9. So 16.3 about here. And minus 1 standard deviation, 12.9. Minus 1 standard deviation. And then if we take 14.6 plus 2 standard deviations, brings us to 18 and 14.6 minus 2 standard deviations, 11.2. So 18 would be 2 standard deviations. Put the wrong value. And 11.2. Oh, here. Approximately what percent of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean? Okay, so from here to here. Well, if we count the one dot on the 18, and this, this dot is not included up there, right? Because we're going from here to here, right? So that is, um, that's 29 of the 30 dots. Well, if you're talking within two standard deviations, then you would not include on the 18 itself, right? So that'd be 28, 28 out of the 30 dots which is approximately 28 divided by 30 that is approximately 93 percent. Okay, next, the standard deviation is the average distance between each data value and the mean. It's an average distance from the mean, really. Now that you have seen where one standard deviation from the mean looks like with two examples, you can start to look at data distribution and estimate the standard deviation for that data. Match the description of the distribution, capital A, B, C, or D, with the appropriate histogram. Okay, now... Um, First thing, they all have the same mean. The standard deviation, right? Two of them have a standard deviation of 10. Two of them have a standard deviation of 40, right? Um, the larger the standard deviation value, the wider the spread. Uh, what do I mean by it when we talk about spread? All right, if I go back to my dot plot, all right, the spread of this data is fairly narrow. It's going from 11 to 18. That's it. Right? It's not going from 10 to 90. It's going from 11 to 18. So that's a narrow spread. If we were going from 0 to 100, that's a wide spread. And we see that since our spread was a narrow spread from 11 to 18, our standard deviation was quite small. It was 1.7. The 
wider the spread, the larger the standard deviation. The wider the spread, the larger the standard deviation. It's important to memorize that. You also learned it back in Algebra 1. All right, so before um, I look at the shape or anything like that, I'm going to look at the spread. Right. Histogram 1 has a spread from 70 to about 125. So spread is 70 to 125. It's not that large of a spread. 55. Histogram 2 has a spread from, let's see, if this is 90, that would be 95. So 85 to 145. That's a spread of what? 60? So this was a spread of 50. This is 60. That spread is the, the difference between 125 and 70 is 50. Where if you go start from 70, you add 50 and get 125. Histogram 3, what's its spread? 0 to 200. Well, that's a much larger spread than histogram one or two, right? So because this is a much larger spread, a much wider spread, this is going to have the larger standard deviation. So this is going to have a standard deviation of 40 as opposed to a standard deviation of 10. And histogram four, our spread is from 50 to, let's see, that that's 50 there. Um, so that means that this has to be a little less than 350, half of it, 325. So this spread is from 50 to 325. These two, this is a wide spread, 0 to 200. So is the 50 to 325. This is a wide spread. So these are the two that have standard deviations of 40. So which one is C and which one is D? Um, well, C has to be approximately symmetric and mound shaped, which, well, that's histogram three then, okay? So this is more mound shaped. So this is C, and that would leave, yeah, this is skewed to the right. Histogram four is definitely skewed right. So this is D. And now from these two, these two would have the standard deviation of 10. And skewed to the right would be histogram number two. So this is histogram two is A, skewed right. And histogram one is approximately symmetric more symmetric than comparing it to histogram two. So this is B. So we have B, A, C, and D. Again, but that's so important. The wider the spread, the larger the standard deviation. And let me just check the means. Means of 100. 100 would be here. Yep. It's kind of about centered if you're looking at the data. Right. Okay, um, so the two homework pages, but if you don't have a calculator, um, you cannot find the, the mean and standard deviation of this first uh, question of the homework. So let me see if I can find, uh, let's see. 
guess I'll get you, I'll get you started on this. So if I'm taking the data from the dot plot here, so 51, that was one student, and there's only one dot, or in this case it's a, I don't know what you want to call it, a diamond. 52, once, 53, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 5, 5, better double check, yep. Four, four, three, two, two, one, one. All right. Then I put that into the calculator. Stat. Um, edit. Clear that out. Clear that out. Put in a number of texts. So on. The mean and standard deviation from the calculator to the nearest tenth. All right, so those of you who have a calculator, right, please just go through the steps and that's what you should get for the mean and standard deviation. You can answer the questions A and B without a calculator. Um, number two, you do not need a calculator. They give us the mean and standard deviation. And yeah, you don't need a calculator for anything else. Um, but with, with number three, please, just like we did in the notes, um, I can't find, all right, please mark the spread first, all right, get the spread. It starts at what and goes to what. Get the spread first, if you would, please, all right, spread. Um, what is this? I don't know what this is. Oh, so this has to be, if this is 10 and that's 20, then this is 15. So you can go either from 10 to like, um, 55, or you could, if you wanted, you could say like 7 to 58, something around that. Both would be acceptable. But please mark the spread for these. Don't just give me, um, you know, A, B, C, D, all right? Give me the spread like we did for the four that we did on page 450. Give me the spread for those. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.